The RXSR is probably the best free sky receiver that you can get today. It's small, it's functional, it's not even too expensive, but it's got one problem. And this problem will affect you even if you're not using the RXSR, you need to update the firmware on the receiver in order to get it working the way it needs to work. In the case of the RXR, the issue is that when they come from the factory, the firmware that's on them doesn't support Lua scripts correctly. You got telemetry working, but the bi-directional communication that Lua scripts require doesn't seem to work. And some people who have the RXSR are also constantly getting sensor lost, sensor lost. Updating the firmware on the receiver is a fix for that. Even if you don't have the RXSR, if you've got some other FreeSky receiver, you still might want to update the firmware. So there's all kinds of reasons to flash new firmware to your receiver, and that's what we're talking about today. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and this is FPV Know-It-All, where you learn everything you need to know to get your quadcopter in the air, keep it flying its best, and enjoy the great hobby of FPV. Today, we're talking about updating the firmware on your FreeSky receiver. And in the intro, I gave you a couple of reasons you might want to do this. The biggest reason is if you're using the RXSR. It, I recommend that you update the firmware on every RXSR you get before you install it in the quad because Lua scripts are so useful. If you've got an RXSR and a Tyrannus, you gotta be using Lua scripts. That's a topic for another video though. <laughs> Link in the video description if you wanna learn how to get Lua scripts working. How, another reason you might wanna update the firmware is if you've got, let's say you've got an XM Plus. XM Plus does not support telemetry, but it does have the ability to output RSSI as one of your aux channels. And you gotta, you gotta flash the right firmware to the XM Plus in order to make it do that. I don't think it does that out of the just stock. A final reason you might wanna update your firmware is to switch the operating region. There are two regions that this uh, hardware comes uh, flashed to. One is the EU and one is FCC or basically the United States. Now it is technically illegal for you to run the FCC firmware in an EU country or vice versa. So don't do that. But if you, let's say, for example, you accidentally bought a receiver with the wrong firmware on it and it just won't bind no matter what you do, it could, that could be the reason and you'll need to flash it to change the region. So there's lots of reasons why you might want to flash the firmware and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Now you can flash the firmware to your receiver using a PC. And in fact, if you do that, there's a function in Betaflight called Serial Pass-Through that lets you flash the receiver via the USB port on your flight controller. That is not what we're going to be doing today. That is a little bit difficult. The main reason it's useful is if you've already got your receiver soldered to your flight controller, in theory, you can use Serial Pass-Through to, to flash it uh, without having to desolder it. But there are some complications to it that mean it's, it's a little tricky. It would be a topic for another video. Now on the Tyrannus, the way to do this is to plug the receiver into these pins in the JR module bay in the back of the radio. You wanna be real careful about how you wire this up. I'll show you how to do it. If you do this wrong, you'll burn the receiver. Just destroy it. On the uh, QX7, there is a port on the underside of the radio. The Tyrannus doesn't have one, and it's even easier to use. It literally just the servo plug just plugs right into it, and you're good to go. On the Tyrannus, there's a little bit of fiddling necessary. Let's take a look uh, at how to do that. And I want to take a little side detour here to show you guys how I use a multimeter to, to explore and identify the pins on an unknown pin header. This is a good idea to test these things, even if, like when I was getting ready to make this video, I went and I looked at Oscar Leong's excellent website about how to do this because I always just like to double check that I know everything right. And he showed a diagram showing the pinout for the Tyrannus. Never trust the documentation. No matter how much you know, it must be right. Always verify with your multimeter because sometimes it's wrong. Don't even trust the silk screen that's printed on the board if you're looking at a flight controller or a circuit board and it says five volts. It could be wrong. Just check with your multimeter beforehand and you'll save yourself some heartache when you, when you don't fry something. So let me show you how I do that. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna turn the Tyrannus on. Whatever, switch one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and I need to have a model loaded up that has the external the JR module, the external um, uh, module active. So I've loaded up my Crossfire module, and if we look right here in the module, you can see here in the model setup, I've got external RF turned on, and the, it's set to Crossfire. And the reason I need that is because if I don't have that, the radio doesn't put any voltage out to the extra, it just leaves it powered down to save battery. So I can't, you can't pin it out if it's not having any voltage on it. And what I'm going to do, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for ground and I'm going to look for voltage on each of the pins. And what I need to do is I need to get a source of ground that I know, something that I know is grounded. Now, one way to do that, one way to do that would be to open up the battery and find the negative wire of the battery, uh, maybe on the balance plug or something like that. That's fine. But another way to do it is like, for example, I know for a fact that the SMA connector is always grounded. And so when you're searching for DC ground, that's a fine place to get ground. So what I'm going to do, and I could even do this with an alligator clip. Oh, I do. I have an alligator clip handy. This is going to be so nice. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an alligator clip. I'm going to clip it to my negative multimeter lead and I'm going to clip that over here to the SMA connector and that is going to give me a source of ground, a ground reference and then I only have to use one probe. I'm not sort of manhandling two probes with both hands. The problem is especially when you're getting into a pin header like this, you can accidentally short something or it's you want to be really careful and, and that just now, now I've got a source of ground. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of these pins and we're going to see what voltage is on them. Now again, I'm going to be real careful not to short these pins against each other because I could short 5 volts or something somewhere it didn't need to go. So we'll start with the first pin. And that's easy. And I've got 137.2 millivolts. So the first thing I notice is that the voltage is very consistent, which means that something is happening on this pin. It's not just floating you know, you know, it's not a power supply because I would see 5 volts or 3.3 volts or 9 volts. It's a, some kind of probably some kind of digital signal. And what we're seeing is the average voltage on the pin as the digital signal goes up and down. So that's probably not anything that I need to care about. Now I'll very carefully get in here at the second pin and I see 0.648 volts. Again, that's probably some kind of digital signal. 0.648 volts is not a voltage that you would see coming out of a power supply. You would see 3.3 or 5 or 12 volts or something like that. So we've got two pins that are some kind of digital signal. Now we come to the third pin and I see 11.2 volts. So that's surely battery voltage right there, 11.2 volts. Third pin, fourth pin, I see zero volts. So that's ground, zero volts between ground and this pin means that's ground. And then the last pin, 0.270 volts. Again, that is probably some kind of digital signal. And actually, yeah, point that's so I've got three pins that likely have some kind of digital signal and I've identified power and ground. Now, what I have, I've, I've learned something very important here on a servo plug. Power is always the center pin and that's a, there's a reason for that. And the reason is that if you plug the servo plug in backwards, power stays in the right place. So if you accident, now this, this particular servo plug is keyed. It's got a little tab to prevent you from plugging it in sideways. That only matters if you're plugging it on a real servo connector, not on this thing. We could easily plug this in backwards. But the point is that the pinout that we found goes uh, power ground signal not ground power signal. So immediately we need we know that we need to modify this adapter slightly. The pinout on the plug is easy to deal with. What you need is uh, like a, a razor knife and a utility knife or something, or I'm gonna try with this little screwdriver. What you need to do is lift this little tab here up. It's, it's not too hard to do. It's a little harder to do without destroying the thing. And then the pin will just pull. Oh, I didn't get it. You gotta lift it up and the pin will pull right out. Come on now. Nope. Just as easy as that. <laughs> it's still catching. There we go. So that pin comes out and this pin comes out. There we go. And then they slide back in again the retention tab needs to be up, but they should slide right back in and you can give them a little tug to see that they're retained. 
and not going to pop out. Let's see, yeah, right side up. Sometimes you need to, yeah, sometimes you need to come back in and just give a little downward push on the tab to push it back down again. But now we've got these pins flipped correctly. And when we plug in to the back of the Tyrannus, we still need to make sure that the RXSR doesn't get too high of a voltage. This is a Fat Shark goggle battery, and they have the two cell voltage broken out to a balance plug because of their fan mod. This is a three, this is a three cell balance plug, but it's broken out with a two cell voltage. By the way, I should tell you the reason that I had to find my the, use a fast shark battery instead of my, the, the standard battery is because I'm using an aftermarket three cell lipo to power my uh, Tyrannus. If you're using the stock nickel metal hydride battery, that voltage is fine and you don't need to, you can use that just fine. Um, if you don't have a fat shark battery, b basically you need any two cell battery that's plugged into a three cell uh, balance plug. Or you could just take the power and ground lines and break them out and plug them into any two cell Just you could strip them and just stick them into a two cell balance, but whatever you just need to have less than nine volts Plugged in and coming out that port. However, you do that is fine So now I'm ready to flash but there's something I need to do first I need to go get the firmware and put it onto my Tyrannus now one way to do that is to plug the Tyrannus into the USB and bring up the flash drives but since I've already got the darn thing open it's a lot easier to just pull the SD card out right here you can you can do that if it's handy or you can plug the radio into USB and put the firmware on the USB drive that way so let's see let's just start with our old friend Google and I'll type FreeSky RXSR firmware I don't know RXSR okay we'll go to the first hit and I want to find the most up-to-date firmware for the FreeSky RXSR mm, cute uh, downloads Go to the download page, fine. Here's the download page, firmware. And I wanna take a look here and make sure I'm downloading the EU firmware, not uh, sorry, the FCC firmware, not the EU firmware. The most recent version is 171103, 7101, I guess. Yes, yeah, see, this is the one where they fixed the issue with Lua Script, support uh, transfer PID parameters. Let's download the most recent version because why not? And let me just look in this zip file and make sure. See, this says LBT. LBT means it is the EU firmware. I don't want that. I don't know what LBT stands for, but yeah, see here is FCC firmware and LBT firmware. So FCC is the firmware I want for because I'm in the United States. So I'm not going to go with 171103 because when I downloaded that one, I only saw the LBT, the EU firmware. I don't know what LBT stands for, but it's EU basically. Here's my Tyrannus SD card, which I've just put into an SD card reader. And I'm going to go into the firmware folder and I'm going to put these files here. So I'm going to grab the FCC firmware XSR version 17.1.0.9 and I'm going to also, as long as I'm here, I'm also going to grab the F port firmware. Now th this is for a video that I'm going to do later, but if you want to use F port, which is, a, I've got, a, I'll put a link in the video description to my video about what F port is. If you want to use F port, you're going to want to grab this firmware and well, again, I'm just going to start with the most recent one and take a look. Is there a README? No README, but I guess I'll just take the most recent one. And again, I'm going to drag it over to my SD card. Now I have the firmware, the FRK files on my SD card, and I'm ready to go back to the bench and actually perform the flash. I'm going to plug in the RXSR. It is powered up. I haven't smoked it yet. I'm going to plug the RXSR in, or if you're soldering, you'll solder it up. You know, connect it to the to the transmitter, and then I'm going to hit menu. Oh, no, sorry. Then I'm going to hold down menu to go into the radio menu and hit page to get to the SD card. I'm going to go down to firmware, and here's the firmware I'm going to flash. I'm going to long press on it and say flash 
external device. Do not flash internal module. That's going to screw up your radio. Flash external device. And now, don't move. We're flashing firmware. Don't move. Don't breathe. Just watch the status bar slowly grow and cross your fingers that you don't brick anything. Because unlike Crossfire, where if you screw up a firmware update on your Crossfire receiver, it keeps a copy of the old firmware and you can just fail back. With a lot of these devices, I like, I'm like i pretty sure of this one, if you screw this up in the middle of the flash, you brick it and then getting it back, I, maybe it's possible, but it's a hassle. So don't brick it. And when you ask, when you people ask sometimes, hey, why should I buy Crossfire instead of the FreeSky R9 system? Well, one reason is things like that, that, that TBS puts into Crossfire. This video isn't about Crossfire, but as long as we have time to kill, well, this progress bar is climbing and I can't move because I'm scared I'll brick my receiver. Crossfire has things like if your firmware update fails halfway through, you don't brick your receiver. You don't have to jump through hoops. All you have to do is power it up with the bind button held down and it goes, no problem, and just fails back to the old firmware, which is obviously how it should work. That's how firmware flashing should work. We should never brick our receiver because we accidentally unplugged something in the middle of a firmware update. I don't think Crossfire, I mean, I don't think uh, FreeSky has that feature. I'm pretty sure they don't. If I, I don't, I, now I'm worried that I'm, somebody's going to go to the comments and go, yes, they do. They added it in firmware version XYZ. I don't know, but I don't think they do because I've had people say, I screwed this up. I bricked my receiver. How do I get it back? And if you had Crossfire, you would just, it'd be easy. Okay, well, we'll Crossfire plug here in the middle of this FreeSky video. FreeSky is great. It could be better, though. It's always room for improvement. And we are done. Now here you can see I've got telemetry working because I see 15.9 volts here at the top of the screen, but let's see if Lewis Scripts is working. It wasn't before. It is. Yes, there we go, I fixed it. Fantastic. Oh, and smart audio is not working because this receiver, well, that's, that's a topic for another video. There you go. That is how you update the firmware on your FreeSky receiver. The exact same process for every receiver, but we did it with the RXSR. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, if you think there's anything I overlooked, please let me know down in the comments. I will do my best to answer and help as much as I can down in the comments. The next video I'm going to make is how to get F port working by flashing the F port and configuring the flight controller. But that is a topic for another day. Look forward to that. Thank you so much. Happy flying.